Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Behind the Dial. I am Paul and we are here in Brooklyn, New York where we'll be sitting and chatting with actor Kelly O'Coin. Some of you may know him as Dollar Bill Stern on Showtime's Billions. As well as some previous roles in The Americans and House of Cards. Over the pandemic, Kelly and I became acquainted over his love for Tivoli and we thought it'd be great to get him on an episode to chat a little bit about his journey, what he's been up to, what he has coming in the future, and a collaboration that we're doing together. This we're is on. Behind the Dot. Hey! <laughs> How you doing? Great to see you, man. How you doing? I'm great. Beautiful day. Nice little ride. Thank you. It's actually relatively new. Did you get into the electric game or no? No, come on. <laughs> no, I, I, I prefer to bike. <laughs> yeah, right? We talked about this before. <laughs> Kelly, thank you for being on this episode with us. Absolutely. Pleasure to get in the room with you. Yeah, definitely. I know this is... The first time uh, in, in uh, quite some time I can do stuff like this. Yeah. So let me just start by talking a little bit about your most recent work. Sure. Billions. You play Dollar Bill Stearns. Yep. Next up, Dollar Bill Stern. What are you taking from this experience playing this character, being a part of this production? Stern! I'm back, baby! I toiled in anonymity for a long time, and I'm, I've been fine with that, and stardom was never my goal. Making a living acting was my goal, but it is kind of nice to um, to have to to walk down the street and have someone say, "Hey, Dollar Bill, love ya." And I was like, "Well, first of all, I hope you love me for the right reasons and not as an aspirational character." <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's my next question. <laughs> that's the next question. <laughs> um, but it's just it is nice to um, to be a part of something that so many people really dig, and I'm proud of it. And the character is so different from me; it's like right. 180 different from me. What have you learned from that character? I've learned that when you're that angry for that long and that intense that your jaw hurts at the end of every day. <laughs> Is that when my jaw hurts? Oh. Yeah, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm a very angry guy, I can tell. Um, no, but I mean, he's, he's just like, he's so tense and I, like, I see shots and I'm just I'm yeah. like jutting my jaw all yeah, the time. Yeah, I was looking at some of the photos. Too. Yeah. And the other thing I think I learned, especially with, with Billions, is it's the first time I've been on a show where I'm essentially in every episode. Mm -hmm. Not as much of this last season because of um, the loyalty to, to Bobby, so that he's off doing his own thing now. Right. One of the things I always missed in TV was the lack of rehearsal um, that theater brought, and I'm a theater person. But what you get that replaces that when you're on a show day in and day out, week in, week out, is the backstory. So by the time you're in, say, season two or three and four and five and six in our case, all the stuff you've already done takes the place of what a lot of rehearsal is about, which is trying to figure out who the character is. Right. And so then all you have to do, and you have these relationships right. with, these, with these other people. And as long as you know exactly what that is, you can just jump into a scene with minimal rehearsal, and right. you actually, uh, you can fire on all cylinders. It's right. not about reinventing the wheel every time. In that way, I feel like I've grown as an actor and, and right. all that stuff too. And certainly grown as an actor, interacting with all these brilliant people I get to play with every day. Let's talk a little bit about your journey. When you were starting out, like anyone starts out in any kind of entertainment business, it's not always easy. There's a lot of trial and error, a lot of auditions, a lot of heartbreak, a lot of missed opportunities. If you're lucky there are a lot of auditions, <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can tell us, has there ever been an odd end job to make ends meet while you were yeah. trying to get your footing in the, in the gigs? Very few people actually become overnight successes. We hear about all of those and we judge ourselves against those, so I think that's why a lot of people get depressed uh, during their journey. But as I always say, embrace the tortoise. I am the quintessential tortoise in this business. And it's inspiring to be quite honest. Well, I mean, I, I see that. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. And you, keep, you kept going through it. I did, and, and one of the things, I had to find survival jobs. I had to find jobs that would work and let me audition, and that they wouldn't fire me if I had to leave for two weeks. I catered a lot, and I, uh, I, I tried telemarketing for a while. But uh, one of the coolest, I was essentially a spy, and I'm not gonna say anymore. <laughs> no, it sounds so much cooler than it actually is, but we would look around New York in different places that sold counterfeit, that were known for selling counterfeit merchandise. The big one was Rolex. So we would report, we would go off on a canvas, see what you saw, 
write it down. Um, don't let them know you're spying. Act like, a, uh, like you're a tourist. And then you call in and report back. When the raid went down, based on the information we gave them, we had to be at a secondary or tertiary site to see when, if there, everyone was on, on walkie-talkies, and so when the raid went down, everyone around the whole area knew, and they started hiding the merchandise. And so we had to sit there and watch where they would take it or hide it, and sometimes it was in the ceiling, sometimes it was in a, a wall, with a, like a fake wall. One time I followed a guy with a bag of Oakley sunglasses about three blocks down Elizabeth Street, and he handed them off to a guy with a nut stand. And the guy opened up this little chute, put the bag in there. And so I was able to tell them it's at this nut stand on Elizabeth Street. This sounds uh, like a, a really good job, by the way. Like, it was so <laughs> fun at the time. It was like adrenaline rush. It was so seven. much fun. Um, and then and I got my gold star. I think that was about a month in. I don't know that I ever found anybody else again. But it was fun, and it was all actors. Um, well, as I said, you got some of the acting chops out in it. Um, you do a, a fair amount of charity work, and you get involved in different types of activism. No bullshit. I grew up in a family where the phrase, fight the good fight, was used, and not ironically. Uh, it was an aspirational phrase and idea, and I'm really glad for that. I can't tell you how many people on Twitter who think I am Dollar Bill get angry with me because my politics don't quite skew the same way. Uh, as as all, the character. Yeah, and the, and the tenor of their uh, annoyance seems to indicate that they think I'm like pulling something over on them. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> You're not a. Hey, that means you're doing your job. Like, <laughs> you're I know. Doing, it's like, wait a minute. I'm not doing this to you. This is a character. Uh, but yeah, it's a, in a way that's sort of yeah. a backhanded yeah, compliment. Yeah, it's a compliment. And at that point, they don't want to compliment me because they're pissed at me. But some of the issues that are most important to me, uh, civil rights has always been huge in our family, social justice. And that's manifesting, in my mind, in the voter rights, voter suppression and voter rights causes. But then I'm on the board of an organization called Culture City, which is an autism rights and acceptance organization. That's um, amazing. And then we're also working on uh, more uh, specifically with social justice issues, issues around um, autism and awareness and right. law enforcement and working with police departments around the country and getting uh, officers trained. That's huge. Pretty, yeah. Yeah. Pretty amazing to me. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's amazing that you make that time, right? I mean, everyone, you're, you're spending your time trying to do your thing as an actor and get you know the next the next yeah. role and yeah, you find the time to do this it's amazing it's rewarding it's really rewarding and it, it it's nice to focus on something out outside of you awesome yeah well even the time you've taken to uh sharing with me about your history with tivoli and as a user and then your family you know loving products and stuff so my dad had one of these the model one but uh, pre-bluetu and i was about to move and he was in a very loving, I'm gonna miss you mood. And, and I just was waxing about, poetic about how beautiful it was and how great the sound was. And there was just this warm quality to both the, the design and the sound. And he was like, take it. <laughs> and so I took it with me to, to Brooklyn and, and had it for years. I ended up getting him um, the Andy Amo uh, because what they need is something that they can travel with. And it was nice to give back and they've loved it. This is like your, your longest co-star. So yeah, tell me about that. You've been in probably like four or five shows with this guy. You had an episode in Madam Secretary? Yeah, he was in Madam Secretary. Yeah, and you've been in House of Cards. Yeah. And in Billions. Any show taking place with the White House being in the setting, this guy has been in there because somewhere in like the Bush, George W., or maybe in Obama, this thing was living in the White House. Really? So that's why every time they have that set off of out in when Maryland, I think yeah. it is, like that's where it lives. I love that. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be coming together for a month. We're going to be offering on our website that customers can buy one of our table radios. That's awesome. And proceeds are going to go to another charity in which you're involved in as well as with your wife, which yeah. is Cora Dance. It's a Brooklyn-based dance company and dance school. It's very community-based. They never turn anyone away if they can't pay tuition. That's never an issue. They've been as much a safe haven and community um, center as they've been a dance company and dance uh, school as well over the years. And uh, I admire their mission. Organizations like that uh, really need to be supported. Well, yeah, we're more than happy and honored to be able to- Well, thank you. This is- To, to, to work that with you and, and hopefully raise some good donations and yes. funding to Cora Dance. Before I wrap up here, what do you got coming up? 
in the, that you can talk about in the what world? What can talk about? Well, uh, I will tell you, and then I will have to kill you, but... Uh, <laughs> that spy thing again. That spy thing. You never, you never get rid of it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the two things I'm really excited about are... Uh, Billions is obviously still airing, but We Crashed, which is the story of WeWork and the precipitous rise and fall. And then the other one is The Girl from Plainville, and that premieres at the end of this month. And it's about a real-life case. It's not inflammatory. It's not um, prurient. It's fascinating. And there's so many more sides to the story than, and layers and nuances than I ever expected to feel when I heard about the case initially. So I'm very excited about that, and that's March 29th. Awesome, yeah. well, I look forward to it. Well, I thank you for taking this time to yeah. chat with us. Well, this is your co-star. Hey. You'll yep. see him in future, future roles. The chemistry between us is just palpable, <laughs> it's just, right? Yeah, it's just <laughs> <laughs> You always seem to get casted as a guy who has to have hair. And you yeah. have this like love-hate thing with it. I'm sure you had some yeah. good roles, like- Pastor uh, Tim. I think you'll have trouble either way. Right, on American. Hated that wig though. <laughs> so, I'm gonna make you wear a wig. Okay. I'm gonna be the blonde. We're gonna play a little game. So, you know, like seven degrees of, I guess it was Kevin Bacon was the big deal there. So seven degrees of Kelly O'Quinn. So I've already done it. I have, I've already mapped you out to two people. Okay. And I've done it in, in four connections. Okay. All right, so if you can do it in less than four, you'll be the winner and um, I'll send you more Tivoli. Kelly O'Coin to Willem Dafoe. Kelly O'Coin to Willem Dafoe. I have no idea. Uh, Willem Dafoe, was he, uh, is there a TV involved? Could there be TV be. or movies. Okay, but I've barely done movies, so it's probably gonna have some it's a TV connection. So I'm yep. gonna say, um, I can't remember the name of the play. <laughs> you told me you were gonna be not so good at this. I'm not good at this. I'll get you in, I'll get you in four. Okay. So you and Paul Giamatti are in billions. <laughs> Okay. okay. That's it was the easiest way to go. It would be fun. Because you can yeah. take him out. I found him in the movie. He was in a movie with Scarlett Johansson called Nanny Diaries. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And then Scarlett Johansson was with Bill Murray in Lost yeah. in Translation. Yeah. And Bill Murray was in one of my favorite movies with William Defoe, which is Life Aquatic. I forgot William Defoe was in that. That is a great movie. Yeah. I love everything. Maybe I went really deep on this. I can't, I can't do it. I can't beat it. I can't. <laughs> well, I can't beat at it. the very least, except I got, that play that I can't remember. <laughs> at the very least, I got you on camera with a wig again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst. <laughs>